Hello YouTube comic fam, it's me the Southern Comic Geek coming back at you from Galaxy Con 2019. First day's over with and boy a lot of a lot of pickups. Some books I already had just got autographed as well as uh, some ones I was able to pick up and so I will preface this video by saying that this is going to be the longest video but keep watching because there's a lot of great pickups here and also my commentary regarding my interactions with the artists and or writers is my opinion and my opinion alone. Um, if I had a good one, you might have had a bad one. I might have had a bad one, you might have had a good one. Everybody has their good and bad days. And so I will say that if I say something about your favorite artist and that you totally disagree with, just keep in mind I might have caught them on a bad day. Okay? So let's dive in. Absolute Carnage number one was able to get Donny Cates and Ryan Stegman's uh, signature. Uh, both of them were sitting right side by side with each other. Um, not too impressed um, with their uh, friendliness. They seem to be interacting a little more heavily um, with, I guess, maybe some people their age. I, I don't know. Um, regardless of my age, I am a fan nevertheless, but um, that was able to be picked up. Another one of my Uncanny X-Men runs that I'm working on. I was able to pick up this awesome X-Men 50, the Steranko cover. I'm going to a con in January, and I'm going to get Jim Steranko to sign this, as well as my Captain America 111. So uh, you'll be seeing this book again, hopefully. X-Men 61. X-Men 83. X-Men 60, X-Men 125, 122, Cable 69, kind of a random 90s comic, but only need like uh, two cables to complete the whole volume of the first series, and so I was able to pick up one of them today. Return of Wolverine, um, I was able to get McNiven. Uh, to sign as well as Leistein, um, who is the inker, and uh, that's McNiven's signature down there, and um, really nice uh, folks. Batman Black and White. I was at a con in New Orleans, Louisiana a while back, and I got Dave Johnson to sign the inside of this, and so uh, today I was able to get Mark Silvestri, who does the cover. And Dave Johnson is one of the writers. And I got Neil Adams to sign this as well. Um, just kind of getting different signatures for this. I um, about didn't get Neil Adams to sign this because he charges so much for everything. Uh, but I said, well, I want it complete. So we'll go ahead and get Adams to sign here. Amazing Spider-Man 43. I'm going to butcher his name, but he is the writer. Strick or some, something or another. Um, great writer, awesome cover, um, despite what the Ramita Jr. haters might say. Uh, but I had this, got him to sign it. Maybe one day I'll get Ramita Jr. to sign this one as well. Amazing Spider-Man 36. He also wrote this. This is known as the 9-11 cover. Hard to find in a good mint grade. So got him to sign that. So Tom Grummet, who... Um, at least in my childhood, knew him for the adventures of Superman, especially towards the Doomsday era. So this is Soup's Fighting for, uh, Doomsday, 497, and then the Resurrection issue, 500. He obviously signs a lot of these, and I typically ask the artists and the writers, said, do you sign this copy very often? Uh, what's your most autographed uh, comic that you've done? He looked at it, and he said, oh, I thought I'd done signed all these. So obviously a lot of people bring these. Got Donnie Cates to sign this Venom 19. Um, of course, Donnie Cates is a writer, but this uh, variant cover, um, name escapes me of the artist, but I just dig this variant cover. So one day, hopefully I'll be able to pick his signature up as well. X-Men number 34. And number 55, I was able to get a good deal on this. This issue presents really, really well, except for the little date stamp up here 
on the E and X-Men, but uh, presents really well. And Venom 6. I got this issue for being a VIP at a Memphis Con a couple of months ago. And so it's pretty cool. And got Stegman and Kate's to autograph it as well. So getting some more. I picked this up. You might recognize this uh, issue from one of my former videos. I really dig this cover, although Greg Capullo did not um, do the cover. Uh, I think Del Otto did, but uh, he did the inside, and I got distracted. I really meant for him to autograph this in red because I thought it would work really good with uh, the Joker. And I got distracted, was talking to him, and he had signed it, and it was done. So it's in the history books. So maybe if I get Del Otto to autograph it in the future, that um, I'll get him, remember, to get him to sign it in red. X-Force, number 25. So got uh, Fabian. Uh, again, I'm going to butcher his name, but uh, he's known for a lot of the writing uh, back in the 90s for X-Titles. And this is also an early Capullo work. So got both of them to sign it there. Uh, these are rebagged and boarded, so I already had this comic. Detective Comics 1000. So uh, got uh, Capullo to sign, and also Neil Adams, who both contributed to this issue. Uh, Jim Lee, who did this uh, variant cover here, um, is one of my favorite artists, so maybe one day I'll be able to pick up Lee's signature uh, as well. Deceased number one. I picked this up at a con. Really cool looking metal issue. Um, Capullo did the cover on it. Got him to autograph that up there. Batman 37. Another Capullo masterpiece. Batman 428. Jim Starlin. Uh, this is a classic Jim Starlin um, issue. Uh, he wasn't supposed to be there today, but I uh, looked up and there he was. There wasn't nobody at his table. So kind of as a side note, there was hundreds of people walking in at the same time I did this morning. I said, I'm going to stay in line all day. But the great thing about this particular con to me is that the, all the other people were going to the anime artists, they were going to the movie stars, and, and they were filling up their lines. I really wasn't as interested in that. Uh, so the people I wanted to see, there was nobody in their lines. And so it was really, really awesome. Uh, so got Starlin's signature on that. Was able to pick up Joe Rubenstein, or Steen's uh, autograph, as well as Starlin's on the Infinity Gauntlet number one. I have my Infinity Gauntlet, so hope, but I left it here in the hotel room. By the time I got back, because I didn't expect him to be there tonight, I left it in the room. Uh, he was already gone by the time I got back, so uh, hopefully tomorrow he'll be there and I'll get it signed. Uh, but Captain Marvel 29, uh, he told me an interesting story about this, that uh, they went back and forth with uh, John Romita Sr., uh, on this particular comic on the head shot and uh, Jim Starlin uh, finally went out and got this um, visual. Uh, I like picking up stories like that. You know, these guys aren't getting any younger and so um, I'm, these stories are really interesting to me. It's part of the magic of going to these things. Web of Spider-Man 32, a classic. I already had it, but I was able to pick up a lot of great signatures. Mike Zek, John Beatty, Bob McLeod. Um, I think Dementis is on here, and I'm probably butchering his name, so sorry about that. But uh, So there's four signatures on this Web of Spider-Man. They were all there. And uh, Mike Zek said, yeah, that's one I'm signing off awful, awful lot. X-Men number 90. X-Men 44, I will give a shout out to the comic vendors uh, who are really nice. There's, I think, five or six comic vendors, but they spread them out really well, so it looked like there's an awful lot more. Um, and there's a lot of uh, options there for those of us who are there to pick up some comics. Um, I accidentally picked up two copies of this, 
and took it back to the guy and said, hey, look, I uh, accidentally picked up two copies. He said, man, it happens all the time. Found another book I was wanting and um, traded it out. So worked out fine. Harbinger number two. Some valiant goodness sprinkled in here. Magnus the Robot Fighter, number 12. This is the first appearance in the modern age of Turok, the Dinosaur Hunter. X-Men number 20. As you can have seen, all these X-Men I've been picking up, I've been making some big dents in my X-Men runs. Uh, X-Men number 43. I met Alan Bellman at this convention. He, For those of you who might not know, he worked for Timely Comics back in the day with Jack Kirby and Stan Lee, all the legends, and helped pencil in the early Captain Americas. Uh, he's 86, 87 years old and seems to be still as spunky and spry as he probably was back in those days. He was really a joy to get to meet. He's a World War II veteran. And um, we got to talk about that, and I thanked him for his service. And um, really interesting guy. And so he had done this book, and uh, he uh, autographed it directly to me. And um, I'm not sure, well, I'm not going to play spoiler, so I'll show you a little bit something else, uh, some other things I picked up from uh, Bellman. So I uh, was able to pick up another Magnificent Signature and uh, Jay Leisting Signature on Death of Wolverine number one. Captain America 8, uh, iconic cover. Rubenstein, Mike Zett, uh, John uh, Beatty. Uh, these were all there and was able to pick up all of their signatures. Incredible Hulk number 372, Rubenstein, Bob McLeod, Peter David, and so some icons in the industry. This is a uh, picture that I picked up from um, Alan Bellman. Uh, you got Adolf Hitler and uh, Kim Jong-un, and uh, Aya is Korean for ouch. Didn't know that. Don't know if that's accurate, but uh, then and now. So I thought this was really interesting. And Probably wouldn't have, I'm not really one on these prints because I just don't have a place to display them. Um, so I was able to pick it up and um, show him some support, even at his uh, age. Um, and uh, that was before I found something else to get him to do. And I'll show you that when I get to it. Incredible Hulk 340 picked this up a couple of uh, weeks ago and uh, decided to get Peter David to sign it. Peter David's a nice enough guy. Of course, he's iconic for a lot of things, in particular his Hulk run back in the day. And um, really, he didn't even charge anything for his stuff. So he just takes donations, which is more than I can say that about the next guy. I'm not going to dog on Neil Adams like I've heard other people dog on Neil Adams. He wasn't... Uh, antisocial, wasn't the nicest guy, especially considering I'm paying $50 a signature for him, you would think he would be a little more um, forthcoming. I mean, he even charges you to take a selfie with him. Uh, I, bit, I wanted to pick this up. I thought I was going to pick it up in a mystery grab box. Wasn't so lucky before I got here. So first comic uh, shop, uh, store rather, in the uh, con that I came to, I said, Give me a deal on this book, and we'll uh, make it happen. Uh, iconic cover for uh, Joker and Batman. Got Neil Adams to sign it. This is one of my favorite pickups. So I passed uh, Seeley's. I'm trying to remember his first name. Ryan, Tim Seeley, one of the two. And I said, you draw Bloodshot. And he said, yeah, well, I had this Bloodshot number one sketch cover. For those of you who know, the Bloodshot one sketch cover was recalled by Valiant because it's so smooth. It's not like a typical sketch cover. We went back and forth. He really didn't want to do it. He said, I really can't tell you if it's going to turn out right. So you know, I don't know. I said, man, I really want it on this one if we can get it done. So 
Uh, he soldiered through, and as you can see, uh, it's awesome. Uh, got him to do half rye, half bloodshot, essentially two sides of the same coin. Um, shout out to Lone Box Love Affair. I think you're the one that got me hooked on these uh, sketch sketches like this. Um, it able, it's able to. Uh, there's no. There's not another one just like it, right? Uh, so uh, able to get some artist sigs. Uh, on some cool books, and uh, they're one of a kind. So I know this is horrible, but uh, in looking at the names of the people that were going to be there, um, I found out that I had this guy's, uh, and it starts with an H, and his name's escaping me. The video that I do tomorrow, I'll remember his name. But uh, he got... Knights of the Old Republic. I had to pull this one out and put some dust, pull some dust off of it. But uh, from back in the day, uh, 08, I think, is when this one was done. He said that this was the first issue that he'd done any kind of interior artwork. So he had done some inks and a page or a cover here or there, but this was the first one he, he had done. I said, well, that's pretty cool. I uh, got to looking at his sketches, and he draws some Deadpool. So I gave him a really cool idea for a Deadpool. It's supposed to be done tomorrow. And so I look forward to getting that and being able to show you that. Uncanny X-Men 222, Mark Silvestri. 221, again, Mark Silvestri. Amazing Spider-Man 546 was able to get McNiven. Um, Dexter... Um, can't think of his name. He's the inker on this. And uh, Dexter Vines, that's him. And uh, he signed it as well. Both really nice guys. And uh, get a little conversation with both of those guys and got them to sign that comic today. This is Original Sin number one, the alternate cover. I just thought that was really cool with the eyeball. And then he ended up signing it in the middle of the eyeball. But uh, that's another McNiven uh, signature there. New Mutants number one, Bob McCloud, classic, iconic cover. And that's called a blank cover, not really. Had some blanks in the middle of that stuff. Um, another Fabian Sig on X-Men 25. Uh, I like to get multiple signatures if I can on these. I have uh, gotten away from grading them as of now. Hopefully I'll be able to pick up Andy Kubert one day and be able to uh, get him to sign that as well. Also got Fabian to sign New Mutants 100, both books he wrote. Wolverine 66, Old Man Logan. Steve McNiven, Dexter Vines. Got them both to sign that. Civil War, same folks, McNiven and Vines. Iconic cover, of course, for some people, the movie made it famous. Silver Surfer number 75. Back in the day, I was a big Silver Surfer fan. And like I told Ron Lim, which is who got this uh, sign, uh, or who signed it rather for me, um, you know, back in my day, which made him feel kind of old, uh, but, you know, back in my day, everything cosmic, it was Ron Lim all over it, right? Uh, Silver Surfer, Thanos, all these, um, not to take anything away from Jim Starlin, but in the 90s, you know, Ron Lim drew Thanos an awful, awful lot. And so picked these up. Ron Lim, super, super nice guy. And uh, he signed these two books for me, uh, Captain Marvel 63. Not a big issue or anything. Uh, just liked his rendition of Captain um, Marvel. And I said Captain Marvel 63. It's Silver Surfer 63. But it has Captain Marvel on the front cover. Uh, I was a big Captain Marvel fan. That's why I got Starlin to do that. So some of the guys, uh, Mike Zach and John Betty, they gave me some certificates of authenticity there. don't think y'all wanted to see those. Batman 436. This is the first appearance of Tim Drake. But And John Betty uh, did the inks on it. But bigger than that, was that this was the first Batman comic book I ever owned. Not this copy, but this issue. And I picked it up fresh off the newsstand back in the day. Uh, this came out not too long after the Batman 1989 movie. And so Batman was fresh on everybody's mind, and in particular mine, and I picked this one up. 
and so uh, got him to sign it while I was there. And then, of course, this is the one Mike Zach and John Beatty said they always sign. Secret Wars number eight, the first appearance of the black costume. Now we got X-Men number 52, 47. 26 picking up a lot of these early x-men in decent shape um, they're not falling apart but they're not in the best of shape uh, 25 16 this is a brand new book uh, there was one store there that had a uh, option for new books and this being the new one that just came out this week right this is a variant uh, virgin variant and I uh, thought it was pretty cool so I picked that one up as well as this one which is Nightwing 66 one of those covers that DC's been putting out where it looks like one thing and then you move the little piece into another now this besides the rye that was done rye bloodshot that Sealy done <clears throat> Beatty done this I found this sketch Captain America been looking for it, but it's been a while since there's been one, so none of the stores had it. Found one of the uh, places there in uh, the con and picked it up for five bucks. Took it back to him after I'd done bought all the rest of the stuff, and I said, Really, this is what I wanted you to do. And he said, Okay. And I didn't know at 86, 87, ever how old he is now you know, how uh, steady his hand was going to be in order to be able to do this, uh, how big the head was going to be, um, how long it was going to take him. And he told me, he said, look, it's going to be tomorrow, you know, because I take my time on these things. I said, yes, sir, that's fine. They called me like an hour later. And um, I just dig this cover. It is great. Got Captain America and Adolf Hitler in the background. And then, of course, he signed it right here. Awesome, awesome looking cover. A lot of history with this. Obviously, uh, he's not going to be with us uh, too terribly much longer. An icon in the industry and was able to get him to do that for me. So that was great. X-Men 109, 102, 36. And this one is actually signed by Ron. And I'm horrible with names tonight. But uh, this is the writer had signed this. And uh, it's a decent grade there. X-Men 108, I believe this is the first John Byrne work on Uncanny X-Men, if I'm not mistaken. Eternal Warrior number four, this is the first appearance of Bloodshot. And so, um, kind of a sought after book with the movie coming out. I was able to pick this one up at a decent price. Found this one in the dollar bin. Been soft collecting the New Mutants, so 66. Cable Volume 2, number 1, X-Men 84, Excalibur 71, and the dollar bin. Couldn't pass up the hologram of Nightcrawler for a dollar. Spider-Man 21, Spider-Man 20, Web of Spider-Man 90. These were all a dollar each. Spider-Man 42, got some J. Lee art going on, uh, number 43. And um, I'm not a huge fan of Jay Lee, to be honest with you. It's just not my style. You know, maybe it is for some people. It's just not for me. Uh, but he is at this con, so I'm thinking I'm going to take these books back tomorrow and just get him to sign them. Most of these guys, except for Neil Adams, are pretty easy going, and, you know, they'll charge you 10 bucks to sign something, and it's a memory, if nothing else. Um, and, uh, you know, kind of help support them out. So, Spider-Man number 41. If I get one signed, it'll probably be that one. I like Iron Fist and Spider-Man, so it's a combo. Amazing Spider-Man number two. Ultimate Spider-Man 79. Batman 12. These were all a dollar a piece. Batman 17. Kind of thinking to get Capullo to sign that for me tomorrow. Um, Uncanny X-Men 10. I really didn't like this um, disbanded storyline but um, I had of most of them the rest of them I just picked up in the dollar bin so how can you go wrong with a good comic 
for a dollar. Uncanny X-Men number nine. Number eight, Nightcrawler toy variant. Number seven. Number six. Multiple Man Toy Variant. This is Uncanny X-Men number two. Spider-Man Gamerverse City at War number one. Clayton Crane. I'm going to get him to sign this tomorrow. I found this in the dollar bin tonight. I'm going to get him to sign this for me tomorrow. He's doing a rye uh, sketch print for me as well. And so I'll be showing that to you. But uh, hopefully you'll be seeing this again tomorrow. Amazing Spider-Man number 25. $7.91. Old Man Quill, number one. Um, not a huge fan, but uh, the, I picked up number two and number three in a 50-cent bin, some uh, shop I was raiding uh, a couple weeks ago, and uh, this one was a dollar. I said, well, I'll go ahead and get the set. Deathstroke 42. Thought that was a cool cover. Deathstroke 43. This is Clayton Crane again. I think I'm going to get him to sign this one tomorrow, too. Batman Who Laughs, number three. Thought that was a really cool cover. Batman 74, Batman 73, 72, cool David Finch cover, Batman 51, and Batman 68. And that is my haul for the first day of GalaxyCon 2019. Tell you the truth, folks, tomorrow... There's not going to be an awful lot of haul video <laughs> tomorrow. Uh, as I mentioned, I've got those couple of sketch variants. I'll probably raid a couple of dollar bins that I didn't get a chance to today. Um, but it, the tomorrow's video won't be near as long. But uh, hopefully you saw a lot of books that you personally have in your collection or that you like. As always, feel free to comment, subscribe. Click that bell because I'm constantly putting out these type of videos. And for those of you who like haul videos or uh, big pickup, uh, so that's generally what I do. Uh, might start doing um, some commentary on some new releases, but we'll see how that goes. But again, feel free to comment below and like this video, share it, and until next time.